All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a high voltage inverter circuit. It'll take roughly 12 volts and it will supply approximately 725 volts at 5 milliamps. Now, when you wind your transformer, if you add more turns to the secondary, you can get a lot higher voltage out of that. I have one that I did that was 1500 volts. So let's go over the schematic. 12 volts DC flows through an inductor, 220 microhenries, and this particular component serves as two purposes. One, it more or less limits the current into the circuit because this circuit, as it's set up, draws roughly 420 milliamps. But if you increase this value to, say, 400 or 500 microhenry, the current will actually drop going to the circuit. So this does have an effect on reducing current in the circuit. And it also serves to keep the frequency that's generated in the circuit from going backwards into your power supply. So it's a filter also. So you have 12 volts coming in and you have a 100 microfarad capacitor 25 volt going from 12 volts to ground. And then you have your 220 microhenry inductor. From there it feeds straight into a 2K resistor and it goes into the base of this transistor and it also connects to this coil which is number one and number one is a primary winding which is measures roughly 0.1 ohms and it is wound with 36 gauge wire and how to do that you're going to wind it around the core until you have roughly 0.1 ohms and then you could solder off the ends so this coil here is roughly 0.1 ohms and the transformer that I used is roughly four and a half to five millimeters square the core and ideally you want to use one of these little yellow power transformers try and look for a flat one like this so rather than this type and this will work you're better off with the flatter one that that's a low profile transformer so once you made this coil and you have one end going to the base of this transistor and tying into the 2K. The other end will go into this base of this transistor. Both emitters go to ground. Between both collectors you will have a 0.1 microfarad 250 volt capacitor and this collector goes all the way over and it comes down into this bifolar wound coil right here. And how you're going to wind this, now this is number two. Number two the total resistance from this point all the way to this point is 0.4 ohms and that is wound with 30 gauge wire and it's roughly 10 turns bifolar wound and this is an example you have four pins on the transformer you take pin number one and two and you wind them at the same exact time together around the core you do your 10 full turns and then when you come out, which is going to be over this way, you want to make sure the wire that was here is going to terminate there. And you want to make sure number two terminates in that position. Because you're going to tie number two and number one together, and that is where the tap comes from, which is right here. Now the reason why it's done that way is because when power is fed in to this connection, which is going to be tied together, some of the power goes clockwise and some goes counterclockwise. So when power is fed in to where these two are going to be tied together in the center, that causes these two windings to be out of phase with each other. Critical that you do that. The last winding is very simple. 40 to 42 gauge and the resistance measures approximately 175 ohms. And you could add more if you want to get higher voltage. Now the ideal transformer is the little yellow power transformer I just showed you and it's going to be four and a half to five millimeters square core roughly thirteen and a half millimeters long this capacitor here is a 25 picofarad 3000 volt rated capacitor and the reason for that capacitor is to act like a resistor and limit the current that's feeding into your high voltage lamp or whatever else you want to power now with this circuit 
I've had no problem at all using a D965, which is a TO92 transistor, and it's also an NTE11, but you can also use an HA3669 or an NTE399, they all work. Just make sure each one of these coils is wound in the same direction. So if you could wind them all clockwise, or you could wind them all counterclockwise, but as long as they're all wound the same way. Power output is roughly 725 volts at 5 milliamps, and it will light this scanner tube up right here. Let me show you a close-up of the circuit. That's the inductor, resistor, capacitor across the power supply, 0.1 microfarad, 250 volt capacitor. This is the TO92 D965 transistor. Another one over here, high voltage pico capacitor. And here is the transformer. And you can see both primary coils are wound on this end, all at one spot. Now I made one, and I wound all my high voltage first, and then I put a layer of tape over it, and then I did my other primary coil on top of the high voltage coil. And it worked. But the best way to do it is how you see here. The high voltage is all here. It's this section, that section, and that, and that. These four. And how they wound this 175 ohm winding is they started here, they went clockwise and filled up this section. And then when that was full, they went into this section and filled this section up. When that one was full, they filled this section and so on into this section. You have one high voltage lead that started at the beginning of this coil and the other lead came off of this coil at the very end. Now I wound all mine in one section, didn't do it in sections like this and it worked, but ideally you would wind it just like this. And here it doesn't make a difference, everything is in the one section for the primary coils. They wound the primary number one coil first, which is this one right here, which is the 0.1 ohm 36 gauge wire. And once that was done, the bifiller wound winding went over that next and that was 10 turns. The transistors run very cool. There's only one problem with the circuit. If one transistor fails, the other one will immediately burn up, and I mean burn up. So as long as the circuit's working properly, you'll have no problems. When you f assemble the circuit, if there's a problem with the transistors blowing, you may want to reverse the wires that go from the collector to the bifiller wound coil. You might want to take that wire there and put it in this position and take this one here and put it in that position. And by doing that it corrected the problem. Let's power it up. Okay. This is pretty bright. This will this has a, a lot of light output this scanner tube. Now this will also light a compact fluorescent bulb, a 9 watt or a 10. It lights it up pretty bright. I just don't have any handy to show you right now, but this will light a compact fluorescent bulb. Total current draws roughly 400 milliamps. Let's turn it off. Off. 